Uh, good morning. It is my pleasure to have here with us uh, the, my friend and colleague, Dr. Helen Cross, who is the president of the International League Against Epilepsy. He now is joining us uh, in uh, our Latin American Congress. Uh, Helen, uh, we are most uh, happy to have you here and to share uh, with us uh, your knowledge. Of course, uh, we have uh, a uh, clear impression of the uh, uh, Congress so far. Yes, it's, it's great to be here. It's my first Latin American Congress, so I'm absolutely delighted to be here. And what has struck me is the huge sense of community across all the Latin American countries, um, you know, and this, the sharing of information. I think there's an, an added um, uh, sense of um, well-being in the fact that it's so long since we've been able to meet face to face. So to be able to do that after so long has been fantastic. But certainly the welcome, the sense of community has been fantastic, but also the standard of symposia and presentations has been really high. The sharing of information, the interaction, the interaction in between the symposia is really obvious. And admittedly, Spanish is not one of my languages, but that said, there's a lot of interaction going on. I can hear around and talking about what's going on. So it's really exciting to be here and also see the degree of attendance, which has been really high. It's been very nice, yes. yes. We're happy for that. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the things is that uh, you have uh, three more years uh, in the future as a president of the ILE. What do you expect to, to move in terms of uh, organization joined with the IVE, the Bureau, in terms of uh, maturation, developing and progressing, uh, joining together for the same attitude and the same benefit in education for the ILE, but also for the uh, treatment of the people with epilepsy. I think we've come into a really exciting time with the approval of the Intersectorial Global Action Plan by all member states at the World Health Assembly in uh, May of this year. We had gained commitment from all those member states to um, enhance epilepsy services, as well as its epilepsy and neurological disorders. But that, I think, gives us a real opportunity to move forward. And in doing so, yes, there's a, it's a big ask, there's a big set of objectives and targets within that global action plan, but we have a 10-year um, uh, duration in which to achieve this. So I think we have to look at it as to how we can support on a regional and a local level chapters talking to their ministers of health. But the advantage we have in working with our partner organisations, particularly the Bureau, is having the patients on board for the advocacy right. and actually coming and talking to the ministers of health about the real issues that matter to the patients. There's no doubt that patients have a much louder voice. Mm -hmm. We as professionals can go on about what services are required. Mm -hmm. The people who are on the receiving end are those that really have the louder voice. Mm -hmm. So working together with them gives us a real opportunity to make a difference over the next five to 10 years. Excellent, so you have a lot of work to do. Uh, we have a lot of work <laughs> we to have do, a lot of work but we do. didn't come into this without knowing we had work to do. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, knowing that you're a, a, a renowned uh, um, pediatric neurologist and been involved in epilepsy surgery and me myself being an a, a epilepsy surgeon. What uh, will you see for the, the next uh, 10 years to the tendency of, uh, of uh, epilepsy surgery in terms of uh, increasing the uh, solutions for people with intractable epilepsy? Mm -hmm. I think as, as what we've learned um, over time is the earlier we operate, the better outcomes. Absolutely. And, you know, if we can um, more carefully select our candidates, the better outcomes. And I think as we move forward, I think we offer the real opportunity of cure to a certain population. And should we be still waiting till they have tried five, six, seven drugs? It's recognizing those candidates earlier, particularly yes. the straightforward candidates. And that, in many resource-limited countries, may also be the way forward, because if we cure those individuals, they're not going to need the subsequent medication and, and care. That's a big ask, because of, in it some is. of the resource-limited, you need to have the facilities and the expertise. 
but concentrating resource is often the way to go forward and that's what I think we can look at moving forward well, as we go. What you just said is an extraordinary thing so everybody should hear it here and to learn it from you that said it very clear that you know you've been involved in a political soldier for so many years and I think this is what uh, the community needs to hear. Mm -hmm. um, anything for uh, for all the uh, neuroscientists, uh, neurologists, pediatric neurologists, adult neurologists uh, that attended to, to this meeting, yeah. something that you would like to say to them? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I've you know had a career in epilepsy for a very long time and the changes I've seen over that period of time have been extraordinary. What we can do for our patients with epilepsy now is streets ahead of what we could do 20 years ago. Yes. And that's due to the integration of science, and clinical work and going back to the research and again going back to basic science again. But we're not there yet. We've gone a long way in determining the causes of epilepsies, particularly the complex epilepsies. We're not quite there yet in formulating the right treatments. So I say it's an exciting time still to come into epilepsy to formulate a career. There are still a lot of questions to be answered. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much. We really enjoyed to have a magnificent lady here with us and uh, to be uh, our leader in the epilepsy field in the world. Thank you.